Hey everyone, and welcome back to Spirituality with Gabriella. So today I am starting this series on how to deepen your intuition. And I just wanted to share some quick tips that you can use to deepen your intuition and start to trust your psychic senses more. You can always ask the universe for a yes, maybe, or no. A lot of people do this through using pendulums, so they'll actually have something where it will swing one way if it's a yes, it will swing another way if it's a no, it will swing a different way if it's a maybe. You can also do this with the sway method, which is just using your body. And the way to do that is to stand straight and to ask the universe for a very specific message. A yes will be going forward like this, and a no will be going backwards like this. So I might ask, do I have permission to read this person's energy? Close my eyes, tune in, and if I start to move forward, that's a yes. If I start to move backwards, that's a no. You can also use it for checking in about opportunities. Is this person the right person for me at this moment in my life? You can get a yes or you can get a no from that. One of the things that is super critical to deepening your intuition is just to be more still and be more present in the moment. There is no way that someone can be truly intuitive if they are constantly going from one thing to the next. Most of us are just way too distracted. And the reason is because we have so much stimulus around us in our environment. And when you meditate, you're actually centering your attention and you are actually kind of cutting out some of the noise that is external. You start to train your mind's ability to really focus and really turn within. And by doing that, you also bring that off the mat outside of the meditation practice and you are able to get more signs throughout your everyday life. As you go throughout your everyday, a lot of people get ideas or thoughts. It's things like, oh, I should start writing a blog or, oh, I should make this certain recipe. And those tiny little things that we often ignore are actually very important because these are often messages from our spirit guides, our angels, and our higher self. And those help us tap into our intuitive abilities. I have heard really cool stories about people who get signs and then they actually act on them. So one that I read in a book is this man was completely lost. His business had totally just burned down and everything was terrible. And he was cleaning out his office one day and this business card just fell out and landed on the table. Just like that, that was it. And it was this person he had met months ago and hadn't really been in contact with recently. And he just decided to call that person and kind of just see how they were and see how things went. And they ended up creating a business together. So there's little signs that our angels and our spirit guides are sending us all the time. And most of us ignore them. But the number one thing is to start paying attention to them. Another thing that I like to do a lot, especially when I was first beginning to read tarot, is really just to pick a card every single day and try and focus on what your intuition is telling you about that card. There are many different decks, there are many different guidebooks that come with those decks, but the thing is you don't need to memorize every single definition. You don't need to go by the book. It is more about trusting your intuition than anything. If I were to have a deck of cards and start shuffling them, one or two might fall out, which is what's happened here. So here we have the Wheel of Fortune and the Five of Swords. Let's pretend that I knew absolutely nothing about either of these. What I would advise to do is look at them carefully and think to yourself, you know, how do I feel when I look at these cards? What do the colors signify for me? What do the people or the characters signify for me? If you see swords, you might know that this might represent a little bit of tension or something sharp, something intellectual, something cutting. If you see a wheel, you might know that that would represent change. So a lot of it is going to already be 
something that you know. The most important thing is to take a leap of faith. So you are going to feel like the crazy person when you say, hey, did your grandma give you a ring or a bracelet about four months ago? And is it blue? You know, sometimes people will look at you like you're crazy and you'll know that whatever it was, it's just not aligning with their reality. But you have to trust it. You have to trust every single message you get because I promise that you will get someone who tells you, oh, actually, yes, and that is a sign. And when those things match up, it is the most magical thing in the world. You have to be okay with people acting like you're a little bit weird or like you have two heads or whatnot. Some things are gonna resonate for people, other things not so much. And the rule is always whatever resonates, keep it. Whatever doesn't resonate, just throw it away because sometimes it is really hard to interpret the symbols and the messages that you're getting from your spirit guides and your angels, but you literally just have to trust them and you have to do your best to interpret them. I hope that these tips helped you today and please let me know if you end up practicing any of these and how they go for you. I am so excited to help you all develop your intuition because as I said in one of my previous videos, I truly believe that this work is available to everyone and all it takes is space and time and practice and dedication. So if I can do it, you can do it and I'm going to send you off with so much love and light. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much and have a wonderful day. Bye!